Hey guys, I wanted to show you an old calculator I've had for a while now. It's the Monroe 990 and it was made in 1970. Now back in the 60s and 70s, the first electronic calculators were being made and they cost a small fortune. They also used hundreds of transistors and weighed a ton. This calculator uses Nixie tubes, which were an old gas tube display. Let me dim the lights a little bit so you can see that display better. So this calculator is pretty simple by today's standards. Let me show you some of the functions. So it's got multiplication. And notice the little comma indicators above the numbers. Those just help you read out the number. It's also got division. It's got a square root function. So let's see, 10 to 24 is 32.00. Now the addition and subtraction are not very intuitive. There is no addition sign. You actually have to use this white equal sign to do the addition. And so I can just add numbers to that total and it just adds it on there using that equal sign. Now to subtract, I actually use a red equal sign, which is right next to it. And so I can just continually you know, add and subtract to the total number using those two keys. Now this also has two memory registers, uh, one of which is a counter. And so if I just do some random calculations here, and I'll do one more. So now if I hit that second memory register, it actually tells me how many calculations I've done. And I've done two so far. And I can continue to just add on to that. I can do some more random calculations. And it's going to tally up that total number. So it looks like I've done seven up to this point. So also with this calculator, there's this dial, and you can't really see it in this light, but you can control the number of decimal points that the calculation is going to have. So I just changed it to 4. It was previously at 2. And so now when I perform this calculation, you'll see that it's 4 decimal points over. And you can go all the way up to 10 um, or go all the way down to 0. So again, the functions aren't anything too special, but what I love about this machine is that it uses Nixie tubes. And for those of you that aren't familiar with Nixie tubes, they contain multiple cathodes within each tube that were shaped like a number, and they fill up with gas once you trigger that number to display. So if I zoom in a little bit here, you can actually see that some of the numbers look brighter than the others, um, and that's because they're layered. So the six is actually the furthest in front, and I think the one or the zero is furthest in back. And so that's why the six looks the brightest, and the one and the zero are pretty dim. So lifting up the hood, I wanted to show you some of the inner workings of the machine. And also without the plastic in front of them, look how vibrant these Nixie tube displays are. I mean, they're such a cool looking light. It's really easy to understand why there's so many collectors for them. Also there's the registry lights, the overflow indicator, and you can see that the numbers go up to 16 digits. So pretty impressive for 1970 and definitely probably a costly machine back in its day. As far as the circuitry, you can see there are eight integrated circuit boards, all with their labels on them. And it's in a pretty compact design, at least compact for early 70s standards. And on the back, you can see the power supply. And I think it says a lot about Monroe's design. You know, the fact that this calculator is over 40 years old now, and it works just as good now as it ever has. And so very impressive, and definitely one of my favorite pieces of my collection and just wanted to show you it. So thanks for watching.